fail cast, we've got two English people, an American and a Scotch bastard. I'm Jack. With me today is Watson. Hello. Jesse. Hello, everyone. And Andy. Hello. Scotch bastard. bastard. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Yorkshire, you're from Scotland. That means that culturally we've been stealing each other's sheep for generations. I have to say something. Fair enough. Exactly, and uh, I'm sure Jesse will get quite protective over his sheep as well if he were. Don't touch them. my sheep, damn it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a Welsh descended American who now lives in Do you Wyoming. Forgot? Yes. Yes, Wyoming, the sheep capital of America. A state that is geologically larger than Great Britain, but only has like 500,000 people. Oh, yes. Which is pretty amazing, actually. Oh, yeah. That's, uh... Are they all in, like, one place? Or, uh... Oh, we're or all... they managed to spread? We have several big cities. Well, cities, with quotes. Um, Laramie is the fourth largest, and we have about 30,000. And do you call that a city? I do, because I grew up in very small towns. Okay. I was going to say, because that's less people than my, my hometown, and we're a small farmer town. Do you know what you should do? You should pull the entire population into, like, a central city in the middle of the state, and then you, like, exile criminals, and then go out into, like, the empty lands in that state and hunt them for sport. So, just make Wyoming a version of Borderlands? Well, when, when do people get hunted for sport in Borderlands? Yeah, the thing is, we don't... People come to Wyoming not to be around a lot of people. Because, you know, it, it would be essentially like Wyoming would be how some Americans perceive upper-class Britain. <laughs> you know, us killing the peasants. <laughs> what do you mean Fair perceive? Isn't okay. that truth? Well, it is, but we don't like to draw attention to it. Oh, okay. Anyway. Um... I saw this thing and it was, uh, and it was, you know, um, the BBC thing being filmed in Aberdeen, Scotland, and um, and it was this guy had his head stuck in a Oh bin. fuck! I saw that. <laughs> oh. And basically, um, the thing underneath it was going on, you know, just in case you thought that stereotype about the British people all being classy Benedict Cumberbatch-like people was true, here's this, and I was like, well, technically that's aimed towards the English people, and this person is Scottish. Here's so. how. Yeah, I'm ripping to the Scots tonight, aren't I? This just you are, going sir. through his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than last week's episode where it was hostility between our two nations. Oh, yeah, because me All and, thanks me to and Fappy. Fappy going at it. <laughs> and I had to jump in there and go, let's talk about something else. Yeah, you went, so video games. Speaking of video games, I've just discovered that I can get Mega Man 2 on my iPod. Woo it's very awesome. Speaking of video games, um, Susan Arndt just released on the Escapist, uh, something about Destiny. Um, Bungie's new game. Uh, I'm, right. I'm just reading it now, but it was like, I guess posted just earlier today. Um, as far as I can tell, it's definitely a first person shooter, but the odd thing is, you're always online, and there are other humans always like but they're players yeah but the game. they're claiming it's not an MMO that sounds quite weird yeah I, I need so to is it a bit like uh, you know that kind of idea is that a bit like that um, was it uh, that World War 2 game that was basically uh, adapted recently to t with zombies in it and you could uh, you know it was like a survival zombie game and you didn't know whether other people were going to play with you or against you but it was that kind of dropping in and out mentality that you know, I haven't wasn't... heard of either of these things they both sound very intriguing I don't know, I'm only halfway through it it's a long article fair enough so I might have to reread it again just to make sure I don't miss anything yeah See, since, since, since I can now be employed by the escapist or you know that sort of thing I've sent in my article proposal and, you know, just kind of waiting for a response. I did get an automated thing right away, though, saying that Susan Arendt was out of office. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, one thing I did notice, though, was that um, her email was, because um, it was just her initial and last name kind of thing, so it had the word Saren in it, and so I was tempted just to fire back one asking if she's being controlled by the Reapers. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, I am um, <laughs> Andy. I can't stop laughing at your Skype avatar. <laughs> Just for the audience, it's Patrick Stewart reading a book that's been photoshopped to say Fifty Shades of Earl Grey. I shall have to find that picture and post it somewhere. Yeah, it's amazing. I I actually just looked that up actually uh, to see if it actually existed, and uh, there is a book called Fifty Shames of Earl Grey, so uh, S H A M E S, um, which is a Fifty Shades of Grey uh, ripoff, um, and basically the guy is into uh, his, his Fifty Shames are things including shopping at Walmart on a Saturday. Um, and his love of BDSM, which stands for Bards, Dragons, Sorcery, and Magic. So, uh... (laughs) (laughs) Still, that's that's an improvement over when we found that Wesley Crusher fan fiction that had been published. (laughs) Oh, 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 that that was a... that was something else. That was a... (laughs) Yeah, we, um... Wesley Crusher fuck machine. It was... yeah, it was... Wesley Crusher, teenage fuck machine. <laughs> that was right. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think there's yeah, anything action. right about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing right. Oh, it was weird. Oh, oh dear. I'm kind of tempted just to read it for the shits and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, uh, you'll never look at him the same way again. Well, yeah. to be fair, no one liked Wesley Crusher in the first place. That's true. Apart from this girl who wrote this, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, Andy, what have you been playing? Uh, Bayonetta, as Fizz is well aware of, because I've been going on about that with her. And Persona 4, because everyone on The Escapist has gone on about it. So I finally got around to playing <laughs> it. And Bayonetta was really good. I haven't got far enough into Persona yet, but I'm enjoying it so far. Oh, fair enough. Uh, so I mean, I mean, I haven't played it, but uh, I mean, what's it? What's Persona Four kind of like then? Oh. Somebody who's played other Persona games could probably give you a better description. You see, it's it's probably a bad thing, or maybe a very good thing, depending on how you look at it. That we don't have Fappy in this one. Probably. <laughs> Seriously, just he he's obsessed with Persona at this point. Yeah. It's also a shame that he's not here because I um, just earlier today I started watching this anime that's called Darker Than Black, which is where his original avatars came from with you know Mao the cat. Oh, okay. Thing is, it's, it's it's a basically it's a cat that can speak, but at, at least in the English dub, for some reason they've given it like, this really like posh middle-aged man's voice, which is really. I suppose it kind of works <laughs> for the character that's being developed, but it's kind of jarring just to see it come from a cat. Is he going to have a cameo in the next Arrakis the Cats movie, or is that a... Uh... What, you mean the most racist thing that Disney ever made? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, it wasn't quite racist, it was more, um... It was like, kind of everybody social circles. wants to beat a white man. <laughs> <laughs> on the positive... Again, it was a... Uh... Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say on the on the good side of it, it's probably better that Fappy isn't here, considering all the death threats that were getting thrown around. Yeah, because it was just like you know, oh Jack, you need to make it to this next um, to the next expo. Why? Because you why cause you love me so much? No, because I want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to have someone always watching Jack just during the <laughs> expo, just in case he disappears suddenly. To be fair though, we established on one of the early podcasts when Matthew was still around, or at least or at least they did it when I was gone, due to connection issues, that they probably wouldn't be able to kill me. <laughs> so let's see let's see if Fappy's better than Hazy and uh, Matthew then. <laughs> Start off with a dare. Oh yeah. Come at me, bro. Well, um I've been uh, I've recently been playing a massive multitude of games. Uh I recently bought a, a, a PS2 again, uh, managed to find one for 20 quid, which wasn't too bad, um, and I bought a load of old PS1 games, so I've been playing, uh, uh, what have I been playing, I've been playing uh, Gex Deep Cover Gecko, uh, Ape Escape. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, Ape Escape is classic. Oh, it is, it is. Um, if you can find a copy of Tobol, please buy Tobol and play it. What's that one? What is that? I'll I'll link you to my retro review of it when we're done here. Okay. 
I was um I was looking for um there was one that came out a long time ago. Basically, uh, it was a side-scrolling uh, game where you I think it was called Tombi. And uh, I oh was, yes, yeah. I can't find a copy of it for less than I think about seventy, eighty quid now. Ridiculously expensive. Yeah. But uh, I remember I played a demo of it once, and I just really wanted to play it. And uh, oh yeah, because yeah, it had a massive demo, from what mm. I remember anyway. Yeah, so I've been I've been trying to hunt that one, but uh, but I've also uh, I just found out on my uh, on my on my tablet, I can uh, I can get broken swords. So I've just got the original broken sword as well, which I never played the first time round. And what is uh, broken sword. Uh, essentially, it, one of those old point and stick adventure, uh, sorry, point and stick, point and click adventure, <laughs> um, around the same time as uh, Monkey Island games, I believe. Oh, right. um, set in uh, set in France, uh, with a couple of characters involved in this big murder mystery. Um, I'm not massively far into it, as I literally just found it yesterday. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it seems pretty darn good. Uh, really good animation, really well detailed and like the stuff they're saying and things which is which, you know good you know like the like the um uh, monkey island games were as well i actually can't think of anything now um, <laughs> but no i was i was having a big discussion with um fizz about the Mega Man games earlier and because there's there's two on the ios store of which i've bought one of them because there's Mega Man 2 and then there's Mega Man x which there's a bit of a go between with them because Mega Man 2 was obviously you know it was only the second one in the series so it's fairly simplistic Mega Man X has all this other stuff, like, you know, you can get into giant robot walkers and stuff, it's awesome. Um, but they need to release the rest of them just because Mega Man's the sort of thing that you can just binge on because it's, it's amazing. Because yeah, you have these, um, you have, like, you know, the Mario formula and the Zelda formula and stuff. And people are like, oh, well, these games are just the same game we released. With Mega Man, that's kind of true. But you don't care because it's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> I've never played a Mega Man game, which, despite I like it's so a, basically the well, the thing about Mega Man is that you know you have um, like n- I think nine or so, or I think it's eight levels maybe, yeah, um, yeah eight levels, and um, you can take them on in any order, like basically because each one has a boss at the end that has a different power, you can go through them in any order, and um, basically when you kill a boss, you get his ability. Um, but obviously, like you know, they can run out. Like they have, each have like a power gauge, which you can you can re- you can get stuff to refill it. But you know, um, and each boss is quite hard to kill and weak to one other power. So it's like an extended rock paper scissors thing. So that you'd have to chip away at least one boss with the standard weapon, um, and then you know start doing the whole thing in order. So it's quite interesting in the w- different ways that you can tackle it. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, and I was saying, I was saying to Fizz the other day because um, in Mega Man 2 there's one called Metal Man whose um, whose attack basically launches a buzzsaw sort of thing across oh, yeah. the screen, and it's really overpowered, and it's really fun to use just because it pretty much one hit kills most things and barely like one shot obviously so meaning one shot is quite adequate and barely drains the power gauge for it at all. <laughs> Fair play. So basically, that's like the one that's recommended to do first. I take it. No, I ended up doing Woodman first because he's very easy. Oh, just because I would say he's very easy to kill, but I managed to kill like, the first three bosses just using the Mega Buster, which is the standard weapon. Oh, okay. Yeah. The uh, the controls on the i on the iPod aren't bad. It's just the lack of tactile sort of response because they aren't actually buttons uh, means that if you kind of occasionally don't really focus, then you will miss. Uh, yeah. See, I find that as well. Anything that's kind of action orientated like that on a on a touch screen, it, yeah, it's okay at times, but sometimes, it, yeah, as you said, yeah, you just miss the buttons, and yeah. I, and I've got a, I've got the uh, 10th anniversary edition of uh, uh, no Grand Theft Auto 3 on my on my pad, and it's just like trying to hit the buttons uh, on my yeah my on my tablet, yeah. Um, Is it an iPad? No, it's a uh, <laughs> it's a Galaxy Tab 2. God damn it, man! <laughs> but. Uh, and it, yeah, it's actually quite difficult at times to, to get those buttons, especially when, when you get in a car and you get about eight buttons appear down the left-hand side and you, you know, all you want to do is try and hit the uh, 
you know, shooting out the window drive-by button and you you can't and you end up threatening the horn or jumping out the car or something <laughs> ridiculous. Oh god. I am. Um, I was in a, I was in a thread and it was um, talking about like characters when they just have really blasé reactions to everything. And um, someone linked the scene from the first Just Cause. I've only played Just Cause 2, but it did serve to remind me how, even though it's a, a fun game to mess around with, that game was tragic in terms of story and voice acting. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's really, oh, yeah. It was like the first game, or at least one of the first games that I played, and I was just like, wait, this is... What is this? I mean, ha- having not played um, Sonic Adventure 2 for years, and then to go back and play it and discover the voice acting, and that was quite bad, especially with Tails. But even then, obviously because I was a kid, it didn't really matter to me as much. But with Just Cause 2, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that, that's not what you played it for, though, was it? No, but... It, I mean, I, sorry? I was saying, you, you played it for that massive kind of toy box mode, just doing what you want. Sorry, sandbox. Yeah, but that was the thing, is that I, I just did it for that, and that I refused to do any of the missions, which was annoying, because obviously one of the most in, useful things in the game was the black market, but it, they made it really hard to get money, and mainly, the, you know, the only ways to get money were to do the little shitty mini-games, or to actually do missions. Which really annoyed me, it's like, it's like oh, here's what we'll do, is we'll subject them to the missions, just so that they, can, that they will have to see all this content if they actually want to be able to utilise the game to its fullest extent. It was really annoying. I'd, I'd just rather they just give me everything and let me screw around the environment. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know if uh, if anyone's seen. Um, basically, Disney have uh, have jumped on to the uh, the Skylanders kind of idea, um, oh, and they're coming doing up that with Disney a Disney game, and you can play as Jack Sparrow and everyone. Yeah, yeah, but uh, of course you've got to get the the range of toys to play as them. Yeah, you know, like Skylanders did. Um, it's already uh, billed at over 300 quid if you wanted to get the game and all the characters on the release. Oh, uh, God. I know, I know, it's uh, it's absurd. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I mean, I can see what they've kind of based it on. I don't know if it, did anyone play uh, Toy Story 3? Yes. A, A bit. bit. Toy Box oh. mode, I think it was called, or something. Yeah, yeah, it had that. Yeah, it was quite good. You know, customizable. Um, they've kind of expanded on that. Put all the other characters in, not just Toy Story, and then, and then decided to go for this plastic toy route. And yeah, great. <laughs> and the end result is, do you get Barbosa having a, like a a bumper car match with Sully the monster? Uh, yeah, essentially, I think that's the the idea of it. Um, yeah, because they incorporated the Pixar characters as well, didn't they? Yeah. Yes, they have. Yeah. So I was about to say, uh, for most of the screenshots at the moment, it looks like it's mostly Pixar characters from what I've seen. But uh, yeah, well, I suppose that's because Disney themselves haven't really been doing much for the past few years. Yeah, true. I can't think of much they actually have done, like themselves. The only thing I can really think, of, the only things I can really think of is the uh, the frog print, the frog, you know, the thing with the black princess and the the frog thing. And that um, Tangled short. Oh yeah, yeah that one. Uh, they also did that Tangled, um, which was the Rapunzel one, uh, and then there was oh, yeah. en- Enchanted. I think well, that, that's a few years ago now, but that was that one with uh, Amy Adams in real life. I did see that Rapunzel. I not, didn't see that Rapunzel thing, but I saw stuff for it, like trailers and stuff. That just went off everyone's radar, didn't it? Um. I, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, I've got a little sister and uh, and my ex liked Disney as well, and they both uh, they both enjoyed it, and it was, they preferred it to the uh, the, the frog one. Uh, to, be fair, to be fair though, the, the thing that the frog had is that it had the guy who does, um, you know, the Admiral from Mass Effect and the Arbiter as the villain. <laughs> fair enough. Because he, he, com- he was in Community as well, wasn't he? Or an episode of it. Oh yeah, he got he was like the narrator for the uh, the pillow, pillow fight. documentary thing. Oh. Oh, yeah, he also he also narrates for the United States Navy. Really? <laughs> <laughs> which is which is great because you'll be watching just this short advertisement for the Navy and his voice just booms on there, and the first thing that comes to my head is Mass Effect, of course. 
That must be like the only thing that you have over the British Navy aside from size. <laughs> Let's uh, not start this I think they've one. pretty much got a lot more than we have uh, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of other things as well, more than just size, but uh, never mind. Yeah, but even so, Royal Marines! Say. Okay, fair one. That's uh... a. <laughs> awesome. And our Navy's Air Force is bigger than the RAF. Yeah, but it's uh, quality, not quantity. That's true. Your, your Marine Corps are, are pretty much as big as our entire forces. <laughs> And quality is still there, folks. It's it's proportional though. It is well actually we ours is we have more military per person in our country than you guys do. So uh, it's actually not proportional. We we're technically a bigger percentage military. Um and we put more money towards ours, which is a bit weird as well. You should look at what what you guys have and what we have and it's uh yeah, ridiculous. Well, it depends like, it depends on the state cuz certain states in the Midwest Wyoming is one of them. We have a very high percentage of adults going to the military. Every high school recruitment okay. office has, or recruitment event has military recruiters. So Wyoming actually has a large per population number of people going in. And I think at one point our university had mandatory ROTC, which is basically... Oh, yeah. Oh, if you know what that is. um, We got away, we did away with it some years ago, but... Yeah, some some states are really good about it. I know Texas is, um, some of the middle western states, and then you get some others that aren't real keen on it. Fair enough. I remember, um, though, I was talking to like a bunch of sort of military personnel, and some of whom were U.S. Marines, and I was like, um, I was like, so those, um, I was like, so what? Because you've served on job, joint operations, haven't you? And they're like, yeah. So what about the British Special Forces and their, their, their combined reaction was something along the lines of, well, those guys are insane. So, yeah. <laughs> so we have that. Because <laughs> it's like something like the Royal Marines has one of the statistically most grueling training courses in the entire world. I yeah, remember. really well. For, for standard forces, yeah. Yeah. Who, I think it was, I have a coworker who is a former Marine and he was working, I think it was with the Dutch. And I don't know if it's true, but I think the Dutch art military might be somewhat unionized. What do you mean? Like, they take... They'll stop working at a certain time of the day. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it was just that one group, what they were doing at the time. But he's just like, yeah, it's like a union. They just suddenly said, we're not going to do any more today and start what? smoking cigarettes. And... What, is like, what if you were, like, a Dutch squad member you, and it's like... Oh, quitting time, and then you were attacked. Well, I don't think you. I don't think you would apply during <laughs> a war scenario. I think it's just maybe training. Mm. Yeah, um, I think. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, other nations are like that. Actually, um, they you know they're, they're not as involved in stuff as kind of uh, uh, you know the the UK and the US. You know, we're kind of always training for something, so we kind of we do get the ass out of it a lot more than uh, a lot of other nations do. I know the uh, the Italians especially like to uh, to have uh, nice extended breaks in the uh, in a coffee shop halfway through an exercise. Uh, <laughs> Besides Austria, do any other European country still work, um, conscript? Because I think Germany, Germany did, away, did didn't they? Uh, does, doesn't it? G- Germany have got rid of it. Uh, Finland still does. Um, I think Denmark does. Um, there's quite a few actually. As, uh, um, I mean, of course, the Swiss. Um, yeah, they the mandatory rifle training, don't they? Yeah, they, uh, the Greeks do. Um, yeah, there's a lot, there's quite a few still. I there's remember a, when I was a kid, that. back before I um, decided to go into the Royal Marines, and I was talking to my friend who had basically been career soldier kind of kid ever ever since, you know, ever since we'd been little together. And he's he's a little bit he's a bit older than me, and I was talking to him, and he it was the point where you know he was really getting ready to go into the military soon, sort of thing. He was getting really tense, like he was sh- like jokingly showing me this video that was um, a bunch of U.S. No, not U.S. Um, U.K. troops in Afghanistan in barracks, basically doing um, "Is this the way to Amarillo?" Oh yeah, yeah, and, I remember um, that one. I just kind of, I just kind of went to him. Hey, what if they were attacked right in the middle of filming that? And he was, he just went really tense and just went, "Shut up! Can you not talk about that kind of thing?" 
<laughs> so, then, then eventually he kind of like decided he wasn't going going to go into the army, and I could kind of see it just because I, you couldn't even make a joke about it. He would just get really tense. I have seen that video actually. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. On, oh, a, uh, on a serious note, I think if you are going to go in, you have to kind of be able to shrug off to some extent what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You pretty much do. Yeah, um, if, if it bothers you that much beforehand, then it's you're not going to do well during or after. And that's then again, there is the the whole anticipation thing as well. You know, um, if he doesn't know what it's going to be like, if he hasn't been before, then it's uh, that that could play on him a lot. Yeah, but he hasn't. He has. He would. He had never. We're teenagers. Well, he, well exactly. We were teenagers, so I just yeah. I can't even remember <laughs> what he said he's doing now. He's doing some cooking thing, and then I think he's going to university. Yeah, fair one. Yeah. But Jesse, he, uh, though, he's abnormally tall and had bright red hair. He'd been one hell of a sniper target. <laughs> <laughs> was a joke that I kept making. <laughs> and you wonder why well, he gave up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm happy for people to make jokes like to me. You're, you're going to get killed. And it's like, well, I probably am. Only around uh, Pappy. Yeah. <laughs> or is yeah. he the sort of person that's liable to make jokes about you going to get shot? No, he's the person who's likely to kill you, according to last week's podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Completely oblivious, aren't they? Well, uh, well, Jesse, it actually turns out, yeah, I, I just looked it up to actually see what you meant by that. Uh, they are unionised. They can join unions. Um, they can strike. strike. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, yeah, go the... Uh, Royal Dutch Army. That's a <laughs> World War Three. Holland, Holland is invaded. The entire army just goes on strike and wants a wage. Wants wage. <laughs> we we don't like the way you're treating us. This is because <laughs> you could tell that they would do that on purpose. It'd be like exactly the same sort of dick move that the UK post office played right before Christmas a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They essentially took Christmas hostage and demanded more money. That that was one of those things that they uh, the government tried to get the military to step in for as well. Yeah, you, I mean you've just got to imagine you've got to wonder what um, what supervillain they elected the head of their union that year. <laughs> <laughs> the Grinch, maybe. Yeah. yeah. We will destroy Christmas if they do not pay us. <laughs> yeah. G- Jim Carrey in heavy makeup turns up and. Uh, uh, I remember I was watching The Grinch um, again. Obviously, I hadn't watched it since I was a little kid. You know the Jim Carrey remake. And one joke that obviously I realised in retrospect was um, when it's showing how The Grinch was delivered as a baby, and he comes down in his back basket, and the people that see him are at a key party. A key party. Okay, basically it's a party, and at the beginning, all the guys put their car keys into a jar, and at the <laughs> end, all the women take one out and then go home with the owner. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see, so like a swingers party. Yeah, so basically the, the, this, this basket comes down in the window, you can just see all these all these women picking keys out the jar or something. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> and, uh, and wasn't it, it was something like he, he was raised by two women, so there's the implication there. Ooh. <laughs> it's legal now, it's legal, it's allowed to happen. Yeah. Well, sorry, Jesse. For us, it's legal now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you barbarians. <laughs> it. Yeah. I won't go there. No. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to upset any of my conservative friends. Fair enough. I just killed all of mine. Is that where the um? Is that <laughs> where the split is? Is it? Is it the conservatives that don't like it? The. Uh, in yeah, 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 in the United like, yeah, whatever. In the United States, kind of what it meant, you know, conservative, i.e., conservating the old laws. Well, yeah, it's it, our government conservative that literally just changed the law, so it's like. In the yeah, United, we're famously inconsistent. In the United true. States, conservative actually has different meanings. You can be fiscal conservative, but then there's um, the moral conservatives. What are uh, now like anti-gay marriage, anti-abortion? Yeah. And I think the big problem with our Republican Party right now is all these different versions of conservatives are sort of beating each other up right now because of the beatings they got in the last two elections. Fair enough. I am. Um, 
I'm a, I'm a fan of this author called John Green, also because he's one of the two Vlog Brothers. If, I, if any of you have heard of them, no, uh, no. Well, basically, they're these two, they're like a big kind of thing on YouTube, and the point is that um, uh, John Green, the author of the two, um, randomly got asked if he wanted to do a thing with the president, and so he did, and um, and so when he was there, he he brought up this like famous pet peeve that he has that the US should stop minting pennies and the president <laughs> agree- and or Obama agreed with him and then he got Obama to finish the interview with kind of this this vlog for this thing of don't forget to be awesome <laughs> <laughs> I honestly wish we would stop printing those pennies though <laughs> yeah we should because you you should because at least with the US example I can say that if you minted a million dollars worth of pennies, it would cost you three million in materials. Yeah, we waste a lot of money. Canada just got rid of their penny. I think it was last year. Yeah. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't actually happen, because we're looking for every way to cut costs over here. Our post office just is going to be dropping Saturday delivery in August. So now we'll God. be down to just Isn't, five days a like week. The weekend is the time most people are home for deliveries. Yeah. Now, if I understand... Yeah. If I understand it correctly, they're going to stop just regular postage, but they might be increasing their package delivery. All right, fair enough. Oh. Okay. Which makes sense, because regular postage, I don't read a lot of what I get. So I'm not... I don't care if it's only (laughs) five days a week. Yeah. Well, all my bills are online. Oh, fair enough. Anyway, for Escapers in UK... Not Escapers in the UK, um, the Escapist Expo in Woo! Carolina. Um, I've ordered my pass because um, I'm, de- I'm determined to go, and I just kind of want to get that cost out of the way so I can budget around it. Um, and I was looking kind of like a way to save money because I want to do this volunteer thing in America for my gap year that involves paying a large sum of money to set it up. Um, and basically, a, f- a return flight in America to America would cost about six hundred quid. Yeah, wow. you gasp in agony. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, one way I could have I could have done it or could do it is um, is doing two separate trips out to America, one for the expo and like a holiday, and then one to actually work, which I may do. I may be able to do depending on how much I can save up, because you know I'm I'm getting into some work at some point. Um, or I could do I could do one trip to America, work straight through. You know, basically, basically camping for three months and stuff, and then just walk into Durham Convention Center looking like a Duna Dime Ranger and probably smelling a lot, lo- a lot worse than one. <laughs> that one sounds worth it. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I did just look you up the cost. In- I I just looked up the cost for my tickets the other day to fly out there, and I'm actually really happy with the cost for round what, trip. What in comparison to six hundred pounds? Um, it for me to fly from. The nearest airport, which is Denver, to Raleigh, and then Raleigh back to Denver, it'll only be about two hundred and sixty dollars. Well, c- given the distance between me and them, and you and them, I'm almost feeling better because that sounds like it should be cheaper, given that you're in. I don't know. The same country. Well, yeah, but um, but then it occurred to me I can't remember where Wyoming is in relation to Carolina, so I might be completely talking out my ass. It's own. it's quite a distance, right? But is it is it? It's not exactly opposite side of the country, though, is it? No, no, no. We're Mountain again, West, so we're not center, but left of center. Ah, oh, fair enough. I'm now currently looking at looking at my evil, almost supervillain-like map of the world on my living room wall. <laughs> <laughs> does your map show states or does it just show the US as one color um, I'm just going to stand up and try and read a bit of it because it's quite far off I, uh, I don't yeah, actually sure. have it's, a world it seems map to show the states, yeah. is anyone else going to the expo um, I unfortunately can't this year um, I'm unable to uh, can't get that much time off but uh, hopefully next year I don't think that will be uh, mainly money issues. I suppose it's a good thing is because I'm taking a gap year, and then because I'm still technically kind of like a, you know living at home kind of student thing, I can afford to just save up all my money for things that I want to do rather than you know bills and food and all that crap. You could that you could um, you could set up a little robot and just have a monitor on it so you could just Skype yourself in. 
<laughs> you know, I thought is that... you were going to offer an actual interesting, worthwhile piece of advice there, and then you just went off into that. <laughs> <laughs> I just read an article. Um, there's a there's a student in elementary school who can't go to school. It's a health issue. With, um, he can't really leave the house very much. So the school went out and got a robot with a monitor, and he just Skypes into class every day. And then he can control the robot around his elementary school. So he can go to the plays, he can talk to his friends at lunch. That sounds odd. I swear to God they did something like that on the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. yeah. He did at the end, yeah. Uh. <laughs> no, that sounds pretty damn cool, though. Yeah. Having a robot version of you at school, that'd be, that'd be cool. You know, yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. I'd have to go whole hog with a thing, though. It wouldn't just be a monitor that moves a bit. I'd have, like, a big body thing that would punch people and shit. Uh, is that a big thing in Scottish schools? Is that um, is that where you have different, uh, d- you know, a different uh, school system to us? Is that because fighting uh, and uh, punching people is part of the curriculum? Is oh, to imply that wasn't part of the curriculum at my school, it was pretty violent at my school. <laughs> well, to say that there were two rapists in my year, then uh, yeah, it was pretty bad, and I killed the conversation. <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rapists tend to do that. Yeah. So I have a question for you, for anyone. Um, my friend and I, we like to play a lot of co-op on the same um, on the same TV. So we'll play on my Xbox or we'll play on my three uh, 64. And we played so far like Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark Zero, a bunch of the Halo games. We did trying to um, Borderlands. We're kind of running out of ideas, though. Are there any games you could recommend where two people could play co-op at the same time? Uh, I, uh... The me and my games? sister. Yeah, that one. That, that That's pretty good. Time Splitters? Time Splitters is awesome. My, um... Me and my sister, we used to play a lot of co-op games when we were growing up. And, uh, we absolutely loved the, uh... The... Oh, what are they called? Uh... Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance... Uh, one I, and two. I really want to get Baldur's Gate. Um, it's different to the uh, the the normal Baldur's Gate one and two. Uh, the Dark Alliance ones are more kind of action RPG. Um, but yeah, they're there. They were pretty good. They were you know two players on the same screen. It wasn't split screen as well, which was an advantage for uh, you know less room on the telly taken up. Yeah, I think, though, if you do have a decent TV, it is better to have split screen, because that way you can just go off in each direction, because I remember, if you've ever played Lego Star Wars, and, like, things like Lego Star Wars, and oh. that is a nightmare. It is. That said, I once played Destroy All Humans 2 on the cooperative, and even at split screen, you still can't go like a certain thing apart, or else like a, a laser collar just yanks you back together. <laughs> that would be annoying. That sounds annoying, definitely. Yeah, it is. But the thing is, there seem to be fewer and fewer split-screen games now, which is irritating. Yeah, it annoys me that they're phasing it out. Although, um, you can still play you can still play Portal 2's multiplayer on split-screen, which is good. Yes. That's me and, good. Me and a friend just binged through it one night, which is quite enjoyable. Yeah, it was probably the most fun I had with a friend on co-op like that, because we just yelled at each other the whole night. Yeah, and um, then there was the whole thing of, uh, of um, you know, GLaDOS trying to drive you apart, so we were actually in the room just to listen to that interaction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was pretty fun. Um, but, yeah, you, um, I've just realised, because you're playing on... Ori- are you? Did you say that you're playing on original Xbox and Nintendo 64? Uh, the, three si- the 360. Oh, good, because it's the 360 Fable games that have cooperative. I was going to say, although Fable slash Fable Lost Chapters Extended Edition thing, it's easily the best Fable game. Yeah. It may only be a single player and you can't choose your gender or anything, but it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, there was al- Aliens this week. That whole doodah that everyone's annoyed about. What, Colonial Marines? Oh, yes. 
Open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur, ruining the tension. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, well basically, um, there's this, there's this footage of someone playing, and like, for some reason in Aliens Colonial Marines, the aliens don't even walk like aliens, they, they walk more like the zombies from Left 4 Dead than they do aliens. And they're really, <laughs> the, the AI is really buggy. So basically there was someone, uh, someone was playing Aliens Colonial Marines. They walk, in, they walk into a room. This alien just kind of like waddles right past them. And they've just, they've just, they've just done it. They've just captioned it. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Brilliant. And Andy, Andy, was it you saying that you actually got to that part or was it someone else and then it ruined all the tension for you? I think that was Sherman Yeo. Oh, right. <laughs> What happened there? I don't know because I've seen I've seen the demo footage that looked absolutely bitching. It it genuinely seems like they were trying to angle false advertising. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that you can because if if you could prove that that wasn't in fact a gameplay demo, and was all pre-rendered as some people have theorised, then I'm fairly certain that that company is guilty of a criminal offence. I don't know if you listen to this fri this past Friday's um podcast <laughs> they spend quite a bit of time talking about that what the communicast no 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 oh, the the official one oh right. the podcat um oh janelle on the escapist i th um i guess she's a lawyer and so she talked about that a little bit all right fair enough do you, like even though you're on the escapist do you read the articles or listen to the Podcast. I read the articles, but I've never bothered to actually listen to the official podcast. I do occasionally. <laughs> I haven't listened to that one yet. And I know it's a bit hypocritical because, considering I host one, but I I've not really had time for podcasts. Uh -huh. I did I did listen to the Drunk Tank quite a bit, but I think Rooster Teeth community wise has started to get a little bit out of hand, so I kind of stopped. Podcast I make sure to listen to is the Destructoid one because that's just hilarious. It's Jim Fair Sterling. Enough. And then, oh Christ, I've forgotten their names. Jonathan Holmes, I'm wanting to say, and Conrad something or other. It is just fantastic. Is it the same three people each week? Oh yeah, it's the same three each week. Fair enough, I can now feel slightly less guilty about have, having lots of recurring members of my roster. <laughs> they've got that good chemistry together, it's just hilarious. Oh yeah. You know, honestly, I think before we left, me and Matthew kind of had that but then things happened. <laughs> anyway. Uh, God. I'm, uh, I'm really surprised, actually. We're, uh, we're at 50 minutes, and we, we've spoken mostly about gaming. I know. This, no. what, what's happened to us? This I is, uh... blame Jesse. <laughs> 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 like, normally we just turn up, we just kind of like talk about literal You know rubbish, what, we could take but... <laughs> it one step further and actually talk about some threads. Oh, wow. <laughs> um... That would be a know. bit uh, amazing. I am... Um, well, actually so, linking it to the escapist. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am... Um, you know, it was really weird, and I'm, I didn't check to see if these had the same o the same um, OP, but I kind of hope they didn't, just because it would be amazing. Um, one was um, something that make, post something that made you really happy today, and the other one was post something that made you really sad today. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Um, I, um, did anybody post in both? Did they literally have they literally been really, mood swinging? Really check, but what I can tell you is that the um, happiness one had like twice the posts last time I checked. <laughs> well, that's and good. I suppose yeah. that's good. I also there was one that was uh, guys. I think you should play this. And basically, what it was was this. this it was this text multiple choice thing. Oh yeah. About about depression. Oh no. <laughs> no no. I actually played it. It's um, yeah, we're gonna get a bit maudlin here. It was about like spreading depression awareness. Okay. And it was like you know, I actually was diagnosed with clinical depression a few years ago, and I actually have to say that it it does do a very good job. And fortunately, what was quite uplifting to me is that I followed basically the route that I took personally in reality in that game, and got basically the best ending. So that means you're happy. I'm awesome. Oh yeah, okay. Just you're, you're awesome in general. 
yeah. No, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing quite well for a few years, so I can say that without having played the game that I'm doing well. But it was just nice to have that reaffirmed. Fair enough. It was good. So, threads keeping up this uh, period of good behaviour. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I am. Um, I've had a pretty busy week, and I haven't actually been on that much. I will admit. I have noticed. Uh, yeah. You uh, probably not actually this week, which is a bit annoying. Yeah. Um, which means probably because I haven't actually been on a feature for for a week. Does that mean that uh, oh, which badge is it you get for being for reading something every week for a set amount of weeks? I've probably broken that, oh, which man. is annoying. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it but, starts with the word insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The slow descent into madness. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> but you know what was annoying. Speaking of madness, a few years ago, not a few years ago, um, about a year ago, I because I, I have a shitty laptop, as I'm sure people are aware at this point. Um, not as bad as mine. I anyway, I bought Amnesia: The Dark Descent in a Steam sale. Oh, that and, um, yeah, it's good. It, from what I've seen, it's a good game, but I wouldn't really truly know because I tried. I installed it. Let me install it. Fired it up, and it's like, lol, no, you can't run it. Like it didn't. It wouldn't even try. <laughs> so, and I also bought Vampire: and The Masquerade Bloodlines. It didn't run that either, which is a bit odd. Your game is a, Your computer has some very picky tastes. I don't. Yeah, because I mean. I've never had that problem before. I mean, I I got Armor 2 so I could play Daisy in my computer. It doesn't it runs it really subparly, but I can still play it. Fair enough. Yes. Uh at least you can get Steam though. Um Yeah. yeah. Oh, can you not? I uh I I can't. I I can barely run games off of GOG. Um remember I was saying uh, it was oh god last year sometime where it was uh, about Fallout the original Fallout game, and uh, I can basically run it like it was playing on a sat nav, updating every four seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, so did you did you pick it up when it was free? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, so did I. I've not I've not played that much of it. I'm probably binge it one day. I haven't played it at all. From what I was, I did find what I played interesting, but I keep leaving games, and not coming back to them for ages. It's probably a bit of a crime for me. Uh, I mean, just, just earlier today I was really bored, so I, I picked up Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and I haven't completed that yet, so I just put it in for the first time in about three years. I was like, oh yeah, how does everything work again? <laughs> I hate that that happens, and uh, especially with like RPGs or something, where uh, where you get used to like which are the good attacks and things, and you, you end up coming back to it ages later, and you... You suck at it because you can't remember how to how to defeat a anything. Pokemon game that wouldn't have that trouble just because it's burned into my mind. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose they're a bit easier, but uh, although well, no, I think it's just because it's Pokemon and it's nostalgic as hell. Although I think everyone who played Pokemon as a little kid had the crime of when they, when you played Pokemon as a really young child, you um, kept giving all of your Pokemon four offensive attacks. Oh, of course. <laughs> I still do. Why, why, do I need, why do I need stats attacks at all? God. You give them four defen- uh, uh, you know, attacking, you know, four offensive yeah, attacks, and, and, you, uh, and you don't actually use any apart from one unless it runs out of PP. PP. And then you <laughs> of course, I m- remember, what is quite interesting is, I remember playing Pokemon as a little kid, and I would run out of PP on all four of those attacks, and at least one of my Pokemon a couple of times in the game. And now I, um, whenever I've done Pokemon playthroughs recently, I've always gone for, I would have two offensive moves and two non-offensive moves, and the two offensive moves would be different types of scene. I could, I could cover a good range with each Pokemon. And I've never run out of PP. Like, so, you know, I've, I've never had to use Flail, which is the, <laughs> which is the zero PP and all your attacks move. <laughs> Fair enough. Before I learned, before I had played my first Pokemon game, my sister, my younger sister, collected the cards. Yeah, that was a bad first introduction. <laughs> Cause I, I don't play card games, and all of a sudden she's teaching me how to play Pokemon the card game. Whoops, oh, my. God, I played that when I was a little But kid. daily. <laughs> Mind you, I. 
I didn't understand the concept at all, and suddenly I'm like, oh cool, I got this green dinosaur thing, and then all of a sudden she pulls out this fiery horse from the pits of hell. Ponyta. I'm defeated, and I'm like, what the hell just happened? And now they've actually played through, um, I think I played Pokemon Crystal, is the version I played on. Oh, yeah. Now I actually understand what was happening. How far did you get on Pokemon Crystal? Um, ooh, I don't remember, that was some time ago. I did finish Pokemon Ruby a few years back. Oh, yeah. And that was my second game I played of it. What really annoyed me about Pokemon Ruby, even I love I love Pokemon Ruby. It was a brilliant game. I think Generation Three has the most interesting region to explore personally, and the best soundtrack. But um, having played Pokemon Crystal, and you know when you complete the Pokemon League and Pokemon Crystal, you can go back to Kanto and do all that shit because obviously the story of Pokemon Crystal is your and or Gold and Silver or whatever is your characters basically doing mop up in a different region after the po- after Team Rocket were defeated by your character from the first game. And at the end of Pokemon Gold, Crystal, whatever the fuck, you go back to Kanto, the first region, and you can beat the original eight gym leaders and then fight your character from the first game. Is it actually your character? No, because obviously it was... G- I think if they were to do something like that nowadays, they would be able to have it so that your Pokemon would be ported over. Um, but no, it was basically just like he had Charizard and stuff Well, I like think, that. if I remember right, the first few games you were a character named Red... Yeah, yeah, and in Crystal, it was, it you were a completely different character. So yeah, it was one game, but with three incarnations in it. And then Crystal was after that; it was a second region, so you would fight Red. Yeah, and I think that's almost where I was. I was at the end game when I stopped playing it. Thing is, I lost my copy of Pokemon Crystal on holiday before I could battle Red, so I never actually got to do that. Yeah. Uh. Um, but from what I understand, this might just be fan art taking creative liberties but I think they to get it as close as possible they based off how you would have come out of Pokemon Yellow because in Pokemon Yellow which was like a an extra game in the first generation released you could get you started off with a Pikachu and you could get all three original starters and I'm not sure but I think that the guy that you fight in that would have f- f- Pikachu the three fully evolved starters and a couple of other Pokemon one oh, of them okay. was Snorlax I remember that much because it was a bastard to beat Oh yeah, Snorlax is a dick. Um, but, it's a uh, big fat dick. All right, calm down. <laughs> um, <laughs> just uh, but yeah, so the, yeah, it's lowering the, the tone there. Point, if I can backtrack amazingly, it was having just been exposed to that. Um, me and my friends were convinced that when we beat the Pokemon League in Ruby, we get to go back through Johto and then go back through Kanto, but we didn't. And I was like, oh depressing. We need to do that. Yeah. But they then do. again they you do. get severely level scale problem because it's always been capped at 100. Um, mm. Thing is though, what what does keep me currently from doing more Pokemon replays? It's because I like the idea of assembling as a, you know, I like the idea of you would be able to go through a Pokemon game and come out with a different, with like a different final team each time, but uh, thing is, you know, you'll go through a Pokemon game, and obviously because it's the same Pokemon game over and over again, you go through the same places, and you'll meet the same Pokemon in the same order, which I think sort of damages the variety of results you could achieve to some extent. And I'm not sure what solution that they could do to, to you know, to get around that, but I think that there is one. I'm surprised. Have have they not come out with a Pokemon MMO? There are a bunch of unofficial ones. Yeah, fans like, tend um, to do it. There was one I played a couple of years ago, but I can't remember really. But yeah, it didn't have like attack animations or anything. It's like he, it was like a browser thing. <laughs> to be fair though, they did do it quite good. Like you could just go into different sort of type areas and catch different Pokemon. And they had ri- like obviously rarities and stuff. The thing is, Nintendo yeah. always shut them down. So no, I don't think they shut this one down. I think it'll probably still be going. I just kind of lost interest because it was one of the things where I was kind of grappling. It, I was about 11 or 12. No, no. So I um, I must have been, I was like grappling with, ooh, is Pokemon for kids? Is it not for kids? And everyone was like, shut up, shut up, Jack. Pokemon's for kids. And I was like, lol, no. Now I don't give a shit, but obviously, you know, back then it was a bit different. Yeah, I got that with Sonic as well. Oh yeah, Sonic, that was the thing. It was the, there was the end of year six, everyone was like, why do you, fuck, do you like Sonic so much? And I was like, because I love my Chow Gardens, that's why. Yes, you bastards. <laughs> Wait, was it you who listened to the podcast that I mentioned the Chow Gardens and you were like, why Jack? Why? Yes, that was me. 
It brought back oh. painful memories. I know, it just it breaks <laughs> your heart. But you'd spend hours in that chill garden. I know, and w- what about when you'd, you'd, you know, you'd mess around like with some like, spin dash and stuff and you'd accidentally hit a chow? Yeah, and then they go flying. You feel oh, terrible. Shit. Oh shit, shit, shit! Because you know you'd be worried that it might hate you and then decide decide to die. Because that was how it worked. <laughs> 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 Fucking emo chav bitches, chat chow, chav not chow, emo chow bitches. To be honest, like, uh, you know, grow your own chav would be a good idea. Yeah. Only if you got to blow his head off with a shotgun afterwards, but yeah. Yeah, if there was a torture mode, definitely. Have yeah. you ever gotten one of those cards, Watson? That's um black and white and there's a girl with a double barrel shotgun and it's just captioned it wasn't quite the same chavs were a lot slower than foxes but at least no one complained i have and it's a woman with the shotguns in like full on like eight, you know, 18th century dress yeah. standing <laughs> on a coast on the coast isn't it it's like yeah <laughs> it's, i did like i have got one of those definitely yeah. <laughs> oh that's a good card that's a yeah there's, a, there's another <laughs> one that we've got and it's um a bunch of like fat middle-aged women, sort of, in a, in a dressing room, and one of them, the, one of them, yeah, they've been really like you know heavy dresses, and one of them's kind of wearing two rows of bead necklaces, um, like one of them's down to her chest, and one of them's down to like past her stomach, and uh, it's just captioned, when my br- when when my nipples reach the second row of beads, then I want you to kill me. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, one thing we haven't mentioned today at all whatsoever, which is quite big and happened this week, uh, Russian Meteor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody? In Soviet Russia, space explores you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> I also love the uh, Vladimir Putin on a, on a bear shooting it with his laser eyes. Um, <laughs> now the Putin's put the boot in who get in our way. Have you ever heard the, um, the history of the Soviet Union according to the Tetris? Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I just, I just love the British guy describing, like, modern Russia. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, of course, so th- this meteor must have, like, gone straight into the town then. And, uh... You know, did, when the residents were standing around watching bits falling off the building, do the bits fall down in like perfect little tetroids? Uh, well, well, no, it didn't. It didn't fall into the city. Oh, did it didn't not? It, like, it, was, it was just the close sky by. And pieces fell to the city. If it, it flew over the city, because um, it was in somewhere in Siberia. Yeah. yeah, but it flew over the city. The thing is, it was moving so fast that what you saw in those video footages. The video footage, um, it was there for seconds, and then it was out of sight. It was traveling so fast that it landed many miles away, and it had the, uh. it had the, um, oh, I had to find the article again, but I think it was like thirty times the striking power of the Hiro- oh God. Hiroshima bomb. If I hit a city, that would have been, well, I want to say hilarious, yeah. but. Um... <laughs> Imagine if that hit a single person. You just see that right <laughs> before you die. What, how, what did you say? Ten times the power of Hiroshima. Or 30, wasn't it? Did um, say? Yeah, yeah, there's a three in there. I'm trying to remember like, how much. You know, I'll have to go back to where my source just was. So that your, just so that your tombstone could say, I was killed by a meteor that hit me. God had to use 30 nuclear bombs to kill me. What's your achievement? <laughs> <laughs> God used the Konami <laughs> code to kill me. Wait, isn't the Konami code invincibility? Though? Didn't it have like yeah. multiple uses? The, the Konami code was different, like, different depending on what game you were playing. Uh, you know what was weird? Yeah. Though, that I got a random like Dragon Ball Z. I think it was Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku 2, which was a Game Boy Advance game. No, no, it was the, it was the first one, Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku, and they included the Konami code and that for invincibility. Which, con- which considering it was just like a random franchise game they did, I think is quite, quite cool. <laughs> oh crikey! I'm just looking at the uh, the photos of the uh, the crater. Wow, big fiery crater. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty darn big crater. Indeed it is. Wow. Anyway, we're coming up on 
a bit past now now, so I think they should we can wrap things up. Okay, dokie. Okay. okay. Right, so everyone just stop your audio, whatever, whatever. Goodbye, everyone. Bye bye. This is one hour of your life you'll never get back. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs>